Howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time to talk Path of Exile. And today I want to talk about the first suggestion I've got for builds to use in the flashback event that's happening uh, starting on this weekend. And that is to go through Winter Orb, the various possible builds you can use, the pros, the cons, the goods, the bads, the uglies of all of the different types of Winter Orb builds that are going around, plus one or two that I want to uh, suggest for your consideration. So firstly, just to say a little bit about the skill Winter Orb itself. Uh, it is the unquestioned best skill in the game right now. Uh, it is definitely going to feel the Nerf Hammer's loving caress in 3.7, and so this is going to be the last chance for you to truly abuse it. Now, many of you have probably already played Winter Orb before. In that case, uh, by all means, if you don't find it fun, don't play it in the flashback. There's plenty of other builds you can choose. Um, and ultimately, it's the flashback event is not about success or, success or failure, it's about having fun. And if you're not going to have fun by playing Winter Orb, then I strongly suggest you don't. But anyways, uh, the skill is a fast clearing skill with low damage but incredible scaling. And what it does, it, you'll notice that it's got a lot of tags, cold, spell, channeling, AoE, duration and projectile. And just from reading the tooltip that you see here on the screen, it's not particularly clear what it does. What happens is, when you uh, have Winter Orb as a skill and you start activating it, it's a channeling skill, so you will stop in place and it will build up over time, gaining more and more effectiveness. You will receive stacks of a buff that go from 1 to 10 by default, 1 to 12 if you're lucky enough to acquire the Eternal Labyrinth tier enchantment for this, uh, for this skill. And the more charges that it's got, so the more stages that it has, the more rapidly that this Winter Orb that is over your head will fire out uh, projectiles at nearby enemies. It intelligently seeks nearby enemies and fires projectiles at them. And there are various ways that you can increase the amount of projectiles you get. Most notably, greater multiple projectiles, which is almost always used with this skill. In fact, if you're using Winter Orb and you're not attaching it to greater multiple projectiles, you're doing it wrong. Um, then, with that, with that set up, it will fire out additional projectiles, which will, will tremendously increase the damage it does. In any case, the skill is a fast clearing skill with low damage but incredible scaling, as I was mentioning, and it's been used as a 5-link or more by 4,883 of the 16,323 players that have achieved level 95 in trade-enabled soft, trade soft core synthesis. So all it would take would be another 15 players to be using Winter Orb as a, as a 5 link that, are re that reach level 95, and it would be a full 30%. That is what you call full-spectrum uh, dominance of the metagame. Now, the first thing I want to talk about quickly is PoE.Ninja builds as a resource that you can use to have a look at what the best players in the game currently are doing with their characters. So we just click on this. Um, so I've just brought up the site. This is PoE.Ninja. It starts out with an economy aggregator. And then when you click the builds option in the uh, top right corner here, it will then bring up the builds information ad aggregator. This is taken by scraping the ladder. So every player that has their profile set to public, uh, their character will be listed here if it is in the highest 15,000 or a bit more than 15,000 characters. In any case, 16, two, three, uh, 3, 2, 3 characters are listed on the ladder. And you'll notice that you can filter it. Let's click Winter Orb as a main skill with five or more links. And now we have 4,883 characters. We have just filtered it. All the characters that don't use Winter Orb as a 5 link have disappeared. And now it will show you uh, various items that those characters tend to use. It will show you other 5 link skills that they have, uh, which is not very many. As you can see, Ice Spear is used as a Castlewell channeling setup by a small minority of Winter Orb players. Uh, they get good results doing it, but I'm not going to talk about those builds. I think they're basically a different build. And then there's a few, um, you know, very, very niche situations where players have got uh, five links of other skills. You can have a look at what people are using as supports. Uh, greater multiple projectiles, infused channeling being the top ones. And if you click on one of these, then it filters out everyone that's not using them. Like I already mentioned that greater multiple projectiles is so good 
that if you're not using it with Winter Orb, you're doing it wrong. So we'll just click that so that anyone that is not using GMP is excluded entirely from the results. A small number of players will uh, finish their build, quit the league, and will deliberately post uh, ridiculous, ridiculous builds to sort of just basically play funny buggers with uh, PoA.Ninja sometimes. Uh, it can be quite hilarious to see that when it does happen, but um, that's just something to keep in mind. In any case, this is an incredible resource to be used a lot in uh, your build, in your character generation process. Uh, this build is, uh, this skill is viable in solo self found. It is viable in hardcore. It is viable in both, and it is viable in neither. So whether you're playing trade enabled or solo self found, whether you're playing softcore, hardcore, doesn't matter. This is an exceptionally good build. Obviously, there'll be changes. Uh, the occultist builds will be more popular in hardcore. There's also an enormous potential for customization, and different builds of Winter Orb can play very differently. They can be built for freeze proliferation, they can be built for lightning fast move speed, they can be built super tanky, or they can be built for massive damage. Generally speaking, though, you can only do one of those four things. Uh, each Ascendancy does one of them very well. Uh, we'll get to this a bit more in a sec, but you'll find the Elementalist is the best at just freezing everything. Uh, but by choosing Elementalist, you become extremely good at freezing, but you don't, uh, you don't gain anything that helps you with your move speed, your tankiness, or your damage dealing output. I mean, you do, do some, you do get some benefits, benefits to damage, but they're just not massive. In terms of support gems, you want to link to Winter Orb. Uh, I'm going to list all the ones you'll consider. And you can then pare them down to your budget while you're while you're getting yourself established in the league. So you'll start with uh, you'll you know you'll start out. You won't have access to a six link early in the league. I have got a video that I'll link as to how I recommend acquiring a six link early in a league. But uh, until that point, you're not going to have one. So you're just going to have to make do with a smaller number of, of uh, support gems. The most important two are greater multiple projectiles and infused channeling you always want to use those two support gems. And in fact, I wouldn't suggest starting using Winter Orb while you're leveling until you have access to all three of those gems, which will typically be when your character level is 38 or higher, and you have done one of two things. Either you've done the Library Optional Quest in Act 3, or you've done Lily's Optional Quest in Act 6, and gained access to the gem stores that they have. So Winter Orb, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Infused Channeling. This Three, this trio is a no-brainer. Next up, you want to consider Concentrated Effect and Controlled Destruction are the best next support gems. That doesn't mean they're always used, but they're the default ones. Use these unless you've got a good reason to use something else. Uh, if in doubt, start with, con uh, with uh, control uh, sorry, Concentrated Effect, the one that reduces the area and increases the damage. Uh, start with that, and then add in Controlled Destruction when you get a fifth link. If you're going for maximum damage, you will, and you're willing to sabotage your ability to freeze enemies in order to gain more damage, you're going to want to take Cold of Fire support. Alternately, and in that case, you can also consider Elemental Focus as a gem. These two work best in the Trickster version. Obviously, you can't use all of Winter Orb, GMP, Infused Channeling, Concentrated Effect, Controlled Destruction, Cold of Fire, and Elemental Focus. So in that case, you're going to have to drop one of those, and you probably drop Controlled Destruction. Alternately, instead of Cold to Fire and Elemental Focus, you might consider Hypothermia for Control, Energy Leech for Survival, or possibly something else for Utility. In terms of Ascendancy choice, uh, your first option is the Trickster, and you'll see it's the most popular in the Synthesis Softcore Trade Enabled League. This is the optimal choice for damage if and only if you can acquire the very, very powerful, unique, the Eternity Shroud. I'm just going to bring that up here and demonstrate what it does. The key mod that it's got though is gain 3 to 5% of elemental damage as extra chaos damage per shaper item equipped. And you will always divine, it, divine this item until you've got 5%. So just treat that as 5%, not as 3 to 5. Uh, this, set of, this set of armor is absolutely incredible. And it also has this additional mod, Hits Ignore Enemy Monster Chaos Resistance, if all equipped items are Shaper items. This is the reason to go Trickstar. It's a very expensive item. Uh, if we have a look at the current League economy, 
Uh, and this is again, this is Softcore League. Uh, and we jump down to Unique Armor here in PoA.Ninja. And you'll see that the Eternity Shroud is currently trading at 5.4 Exalted Orbs. It will be more expensive early in the league because it is very good and it only drops from Uber Elder. So, um, this has incredible synergy with Harness the Void, the Trickster Ascendancy that adds lots of, uh, ad basically it gives you chaos damage as a percentage of uh, non-chaos damage that your spells, spells and attacks and everything else do. These have incredible synergy with each other and the rest of the Trickster Ascendancy is good as well. The Trickster version always uses Cold to Fire support, or at least should always use it, and usually specs into Critical Strikes. And the reason is that Harness the Void gives an effective 18.75% of elemental damage added as extra chaos. When you convert damage in Path of Exile, so if you're dealing cold damage and you convert it to fire by means of the Cold to Fire support gem, or any other means such as the Pyre Unique Ring, uh, let's say you're dealing 100 damage, 100 cold damage, you will get your 18.75% of the cold damage added as extra chaos. Then that will be converted to fire. Let's say you've got 100%, so it's all converted to 100, to 100 fire damage. You will then get another 18.75% of that fire damage. This is a broken interaction. It is extremely overpowered, and it's the reason that this mod of... Uh, non-chaos damage added as extra chaos damage that you find on Harness the Void and on Eternity Shroud, or Eternity Shroud's li limited to elemental damage. It's the reason that that mod is so good. So the Trickster build goes all in on this. It uses the Atsuri Flask, uh, Atsuri's Promise, to get even more, uh, even more elemental damage added as extra chaos. And it can potentially get as much as 78.5% as of its uh, elemental damage added as extra chaos. So it gets that firstly from the cold damage, then again from the fire damage. Monsters tend to have less chaos resistance and actually they have none if you can use the Eternity Shroud to its maximum potential. So for that reason, uh, you can do tremendous damage, staggering amounts of damage. However, you're sacrificing the ability to freeze the, and a bunch of other effects as well. So there is a real cost to pay. Uh, the key items for the Trickster are a six link Eternity Shroud, and this is not negotiable. You have to get this item for the Trickster to be to go from serviceable to strong. You want a Pyre Unique Ring and you want it on a Shaper base. This is very expensive because it can only be acquired by using chance orbs on shaped sapphire rings. I believe Pyre is a sapphire ring if it's a if make sure you check that it's not a ruby ring first. Uh, if it's a ruby ring, feel free to laugh at me. Uh, but basically you need to chance orb a, a pyre and then you need to get a bunch of cheap items as well. Atsuri's Promise, uh, Solstice Vigil, which is not cheap but isn't particularly expensive. And optionally, try to get Unnatural Instinct, but that is a hard one to get your hands on. In any case, it's a very expensive build to put together. Uh, 50 to 100 exalts to complete everything. And it, whilst it's serviceable on 10 exalts, uh, when you just use the Eternity Shroud as a 6 link, you don't use Pyre at all, and you use the Cold to Fire gem, uh, it does not work on two exalts. So Trickster is something to consider as the power gamer only option here. We have the Elementalist as a second option to consider, which is great for freezing everything. It usually issues crit entirely in favor of Elemental Overload, and gets an incredible performance on low budget, but does not scale as high as the Trickster can. And we'll have a quick look at the, um, at the some of the passive trees I'll bring up at the end of, at the end of discussing this. Elementalist is strong at speed clearing and bad at bosses on a, even on a 50 exalt budget, uh, where you want to spend your 50 exalts on a headhunter and cheap gear. At a 10 exalt budget, it's solid, uh, not amazing, but it does perform. And at two exalt budget, it's strong. It's very strong. It's one of the best builds you'll find. The Occultist is the next option. The Occultist is massively tanky, often goes low life, uh, and then abuses the incredibly powerful Chevron's wrappings as a, uh, as a way of then amping up your, um, amping up your uh, damage alongside using the Occultist inherent energy shield bonuses 
to counteract the fact that uh, you don't get very much energy shield out of Chevron's wrappings themselves. It is very good in very deep delves on a high budget, on a, uh, so 50 exalts. On a 10 exalt medium budget, it's strong but slowish. And on a 2 exalt budget, it will perform pretty well again, but will be slowish. Uh, now, two hipster choices as well to consider. There is a Pathfinder. This is paid, played by a small number in Synthesis. It is all about move speed. Pathfinder is very fast, and it will be great for ultra-fast clearing of lower tier maps. If you can amass a 50 exalt budget with a headhunter and a bunch of um, a bunch of magic find gear and an off-color queen of the forest, uh, you will be able to do very good magic finding on low tier maps. If you um, if you're looking at the at the 10 exalt budget, you can go stupidly fast without headhunter in magic find gear in low tier maps. Again, burial chambers. At uh, two exalts, you can go fast with only a couple of magic find pieces in low tier maps such as burial chambers. This works, it's an unusual choice, but it does work. Lastly, my second hipster choice is the Guardian. The Guardian is outclassed at, for Winter Orb in both offense and defense, but it has one very narrow niche that you should consider if you're somewhat of a power gamer and you're intending to chase a demigod's dominance in this league. The Guardian is a very party-focused class. As a result, uh, it is not very popular at all in solo self-found. Consequentially, the bar that you need to clear in order to beat one of the top 10 Guardians in the entire server is very low compared to other classes. For that reason, uh, Winter Orb actually synergizes pretty well with the Guardian. You have uh, various defensive bonuses of the Guardian, you have your auras which amp up your hatred aura and your uh, and also your um, what's the name of that other there's the other aura that everyone uses uh, this is where this is where the excellent website comes in handy zealotry aura uh, amp up your zealotry aura which adds spell damage and you also have the harmony of purpose node which gives you a bonus to oh so grants you a lot of charges nearby you and nearby, oh sorry, 10% chance to gain a power, frenzy, or endurance charge whenever you hit an enemy. All of this gives you the opportunity to actually be a functional solo character on the, the class that is solely designed for party play. As a result, uh, it has its very narrow niche. If you want to be the best of a bad lot, because there will not be very many people playing Guardians in solo self-found, and you want a demigod's dominance, I strongly suggest considering playing Winter Orb as a guardian. Anyways, that's all I've got for the moment. Uh, if you want to check out some passive trees that other people are playing, uh, pop to poe.ninja and select Winter Orb, greater multiple projectiles to knock out anyone that's just being silly, and the specific, uh, the specific ascendancy class you're interested in, so let's say Elementalist, and click passive tree heat map here. This will show you a map of the, of the passive tree with nodes in darker colors the more popular they are. You'll also notice that some specific nodes, uh, such as Elemental Overload, transform the way you build the tree. You can lock those by jumping down here and saying, okay, I only want to see characters that respect Elemental Overload. And there you go. All of the crit nodes, things such as, uh, I believe it's... Doomcast is somewhere around here, very powerful critical strikes uh, node for, for spellcasters, uh, those are gone. Anyways, that's all I've got for the moment. Uh, if you've got any questions, fire them away below, otherwise I will be up for build discussion of Divine Ire at some point in the next couple of days.